Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz, and today we're waking up to two rounds of severe weather possible for different parts of Australia. The first one is going to be around New South Wales, which is currently an ongoing threat where some very heavy rainfall is expected to be falling on the New South Wales southeastern coastline. South of Sydney, we're up to 200 millimetres is possible over the next 72 hours. We're going to crack into detail into that very shortly. We've also got a severe weather threat on the other side of Australia with a powerful cold front coming through tonight for Western Australia and another series of strong fronts coming through this weekend which could also deliver up to 100 millimetres for some parts of Western Australia. But we're going to start things off over in New South Wales because it is the more immediate threat right now. You can already start to see a low-pressure system meandering over New South Wales. It's currently centred over the top of Dubbo and Orange at this time uh, in the northern central parts of New South Wales, and it's driving in an awful lot of rainfall from the Tasman Sea sort of area over in the uh, Pacific Ocean. It's driving in quite a lot of rainfall, actually. Just take a look at the radar imagery right now. We've got a very heavy band of showers moving through to the Sydney area or south of the Sydney area this time. These showers are containing rainfall pockets that are dropping between 30 and 50 millimetres an hour in some locations here. So very heavy rainfall is currently being reported outside of Nara, Kiama, and down towards Batemans Bay, and a couple of heavy showers extending further south of that. Of that. Still, and you can see over the past six hours, this rainfall has been very consistent in this area with a couple of showers and storms as well. It looks like the rainfall is clearing out of the Sydney area at this time, or it did a couple of hours ago for the morning commute. It looks like Sydney is going to have a dry morning, but a couple more showers are still possible over the course of today and into tomorrow as well. But the bulk of the rainfall just now will be around the narrow area south of Wollongong, but north of Batemans Bay and Naruma. Uh, it shouldn't also be impacting Canberra too much. However, we will have to wait and see. In terms of wind observations as well, you'd expect in a system like this, wind gusts to be starting to push up into the 30 to 50 kilometer an hour mark and that's exactly what they're doing. I've got some wind observation sustain of around 30 kilometers an hour outside of Captain's Flat this gloomy morning and those wind gusts you could extrapolate those to be around 50 to 55 kilometers an hour. In terms of rainfall we don't actually have any rain observations through here just yet but in the last 24 hours I'm saying at least 100 millimeters has fallen at one or two locations. Widespread totals between 40 and 75 millimeters would have been reported as well outside of the Wollongong area especially towards the south. And also with a couple of these showers on the southern side, considering temperatures are very low this morning at around uh, 4 to 5 degrees Celsius in some of the um, elevated communities, and as well as 2 degrees Celsius for Threadbow this morning, we're probably going to have the chance of some snow accumulations this evening as well on the um, Kosciuszko Mountains and in that sort of area. And even as far north as the mountains outside of Canberra, I forget the names of them, but there are a couple of uh, hills that have me concerned for a couple of uh, centimetres of snowfall later on this evening so just make sure that you are taking care if you do live in a snow prone area because there is likely going to be a little bit of snowfall around here and there but nothing too crazy just a couple of centimeters and it likely won't settle as well now throughout the course of today the rainfall will ease off for the sydney metro area we've had the worst of the rainfall this morning but as this low pressure system intensifies just offshore the rainfall is going to continue for areas between sydney down to naruma and that includes oladala and wollongong as well expecting some very heavy falls throughout the course of of today. And then as the back end of this cold front comes through Friday morning, that will be the last of the significant rainfall. But for the communities around Naruma, up towards Batemans Bay, Jervis Bay, and even as far north as Wollongong, expect moderate heavy rainfall to be pretty consistent over the next 24 to 36 hours, finally easing off Friday evening. Still a couple of showers persisting right through Saturday and into Sunday evening, but this cold front clears off by Sunday. Now, I wouldn't call this necessarily an East Coast low. It's very much East Coast low in the fashion of how it's formed and also in the fashion of how much rainfall and wind it is going to drive on short in New South Wales. But I do also think that East Coast Low is a bit of a taboo term at this time. They're, everything's been called an East Coast Low, basically. And this is by no means a stronger weather system that's offshore from Sydney or New South Wales at this time. In fact, maximum wind gusts from this weather system aren't even going to touch 90 kilometres an hour. And they're not going to be coming ashore when they do reach 90 kilometres an hour either. We're looking at wind gusts here of, of around 60 kilometres an hour offshore from the New South Wales coastline really not strong at all and they do actually peak out this afternoon and evening but still really not strong at all 70 kilometers an hour at a worst case uh, rainfall is still a really big threat if we take a look at rainfall accumulations around the sydney area or south of wollongong at least over the next 24 hours so that just for the rest of today until 9 a.m tomorrow we're looking at a further 100 millimeters or so and then over the next 72 hours we're looking at between 150 and 200 millimeters around wollongong or nowra uh, in fact a huge amount of rain 
flow around Wollongong and Nowra is possible and Kiama as well which is currently one of the wettest parts in New South Wales at least for the year so far where the, where the rainfall accumulations are sitting at about 200% above average we're still looking at rainfall accumulations between 150 millimeters or so and that is not rainfall that they need especially in a 72 hour period and the majority of that's going to be falling in the next 24 hours this is going to be causing some significant flooding in the area so if you do live in a flood prone area today just make sure you are taking extra care on the roads or taking extra care around things and if it is flooded forget it there is no point going back to flooded homes or property until the all clear has been given by your local authorities or the bureau of meteorology because the conditions are going to be hazardous throughout the course of today up into warragamba dam as well which i believe is still sitting at 97 percent capacity we've got a further 70 or 80 millimeters falling in the catchment today or just throughout the course of the next uh, 48 hours by the looks of things so that is some very heavy rainfall that once again they do not need up there either uh, the rainfall around this southeastern part of new south wales has been huge so far this year and as such significant flooding is possible in fact they're already getting up to how much rainfall they should have had by around september or october in a normal calendar year for some locations and it's only june at this time so yeah, it really does put into perspective how much rainfall they have had. Down on the south coast as well, around Malakuta, you're looking at around 75 millimetres, and there's still pockets here approaching 180 millimetres of rainfall, so some very heavy rainfall as possible as far south as Victoria. Unfortunately, though, it does look like Victoria is missing out on the vast majority of the rainfall. We're not going to be um, neglecting New South Wales' agricultural regions as well, around Orange Parks, Young, Bathurst, that sort of area. They do have some significant rainfall coming in there for, uh, throughout the course of today as well it's going to be that light to moderate rainfall as well where you're only getting about one to three millimeters every hour but over the next six to twelve hours that is going to be adding up to up to 30 millimeters of rainfall which is possible over the top of orange and communities surrounding orange and dubbo throughout the course of the next 24 hours this is a very good picture to be looking at for farmers who have interests in this area considering there is some steady but heavy rainfall expected throughout the course of today like i said up to 30 millimeters of much needed rainfall in this part of the agriculture cultural districts of New South Wales, much needed rainfall accumulations and very welcome indeed. Now I did also have a concern towards tomorrow morning where the back end of this weather system, especially in the north of New South Wales, is going to be very cold. It doesn't look like it's necessarily the case anymore, but still tomorrow morning conditions could be as low as the zero degree Celsius mark up in the northern parts of New South Wales outside of Grafton and Armadale up there. It looks like temperatures are going to plummet, but the bottom end of New South Wales doesn't look like it's going to be as cold. It looks like maybe Saturday morning the conditions really cool down for the bottom parts of New South Wales and into the mountains but still nothing too crazy there it's just Tasmania that's now frequently getting these sub-zero nights and mornings which is very much unpleasant weather I mean it's bitterly cold down there and it's still going to be really cold through New South Wales and Victoria but in terms of a general weather forecast it doesn't look like it's going to be as cold as it would be in the back end of this weather system as it pulls away towards New Zealand if I have missed anything or if I've missed your forecast location then please do leave in the comment section down below and I'll be happy to answer your questions or comments privately um, but yeah that basically does it for a New South Wales weather forecast we're going to change focus now to a general weather outlook around the east coast of Australia before talking about western Australia so just starting things off with a rainfall forecast for the next 10 days there's no really standout wet places apart from Victoria where a couple of drops of rainfall are expected to come through early on next week Monday and Tuesday up to 25 millimeters could be falling around the Melbourne area and on the south coastal regions 50 millimeters is possible on Tasmania as a big time cold front comes through Tuesday afternoon and into Wednesday a lot of snowfall expected there as well up to 15 centimeters of the stuff and this front as well will be housing damaging winds so next Monday and Tuesday around Melbourne Tasmania and other parts of Victoria expect some moderate to heavy rainfall very cold conditions damaging winds and some heavy uh, falls to occur along the south coastal region and also the west coast of Tasmania in terms of peak rainfall accumulations we're going to be talking about 20 to 30 millimeters of rain up to 50 millimeters Millimeters in more elevated communities around Mount Dandarong in Melbourne and into the mountainous areas outside of Melbourne and the Gippsland's region in eastern Victoria. And in Tasmania, we're going to be talking about 60 to 70 millimetres of rainfall outside of Queenstown and the mining communities on the west coast, and up to 60 millimetres as well possible around Launceston too. Hobart picking up a pretty disappointing 20 millimetres, but still much needed rainfall there. And the east coast certainly not needing any more rainfall on Tasmania, and expected 7 to 10 millimetres of rainfall for some locations. I tell you what does need a little bit of rainfall is this little island that I've forgotten the name of. I feel a bit embarrassed about that.
that. Uh, but this island here in the Bass Strait currently under exceptional drought conditions and they do desperately need some very good rainfall to kind of quench this drought here, which looks like they're gonna be getting over the next 10 days. By Friday, the drought risk forecast is nil there. We've just got a bit more drought to worry about in South Australia. They're currently experiencing some very dry conditions at this time with no end in sight. Up in Queensland, the Northern Territory and other parts of Western Australia, very little rainfall to be talking about. Brisbane, high and dry. The um, Wide Bay area, high and dry as well. Up into far north Queensland, between Townsville up towards Cooktown, including Cairns and Innisfail, looking high and dry as well. Just a couple of showers here and there over the next 10 days, but nothing crazy. Northern Territory as well, bone dry as you would expect, and that leads us very nicely into the next part of our video, Western Australia. We do have some significant cold front activity expected for Western Australia over the next 10 days. You can see on the rainfall accumulation map here. However, we've got a big model discrepancy between the Eastern Rift, the GFS model, and then the Access G3 model. The Access G3 is calling for a very weird thing to be happening with the Saturday storm, but I'll be talking about that in just a couple of minutes. We're going to take a look at the satellite picture right now and take a look at what's coming in for Perth. And if I told you that this was in the next major cold front, you'd probably laugh in my face, and you're probably laughing in my face right now because this does not look major at all. Don't be fooled. Sea surface temperatures are going to promote some pretty big thunder storm activity as this system moves up to the Perth coastal region. Uh, we'll likely be seeing some nice convection blow up and some very good lightning displays as this cold front makes its crossing of the coast around 5 or 6 p.m. tonight. I don't think the Bureau of Meteorology will issue a severe weather warning for this system. I would be surprised if they did because it's not looking like it's going to be a major cold front, but it will be bringing 20 millimeters of rainfall in a quick amount of time. Some great lightning displays as well by the looks of things. There's going to be a lot of thunder and lightning with this system. And on the back end of it, there is a chance of some small hailstones. I'm not going to say that it's a likely chance this time, but combined with the threat of heavy rainfall, these small hailstones uh, do pose a slight risk in terms of flash flooding and maybe even damage to a property as well, such as cars parked outside. Just a heads up, the small hailstones, they're very unlikely at this time, probably a 20 or 30% chance of occurring, uh, but the conditions look very unstable in the upper level environments, and as such, there is that risk of small hailstones. But yeah, take a look at this peak rainfall accumulation, it's 30 millimetres an hour by the looks of things as we get to the later hours of tonight. And this is from the Eastern Wave, which is notoriously an underestimated, or not an underestimated, but it's certainly it doesn't overestimate in terms of rainfall accumulations. Very heavy rainfall is kind of the headline story right now for parts of uh, Western Australia around the Perth metro area. In terms of the maximum rainfall accumulation over the next 24 hours, I'd say 40 millimetres is the absolute top in some areas of the Darling Ranges around Dwelling Up or Collie, most likely to receive the heaviest of the rainfall. But the Perth metro area expecting a healthy 20 millimetres to fall between 6 and 8 p.m. tonight. Could be a little bit earlier, could be a little bit later, depending on whereabouts you are. Southern suburb of course going to get it first. Mantra probably going to get it at around 4 p.m. And the northern suburbs will be a, bit, a little bit later, rather at around 7 or 8 p.m. when this cold front hits. Uh, and then later tonight for inland communities into the wheat belt. But yeah, very heavy rainfall expected by the looks of things. Uh, it's not going to be moderate to heavy or even light at all. It's going to be very heavy at times. The initial cold front will likely register as oranges or reds on the Bureau of Meteorology's radar um, colour scheme. However, I do also think that the Perth, uh, the Perth radar, the Serpent radar at least is currently down. We're using the backup Perth Airport radar, which is a bit of an inconvenience, especially with the severe weather coming in. That just sh goes to show how strong that cold front was last weekend. It did take out the Perth radar, or the Serpentine radar. We're using the backup airport radar, which isn't as high quality, but still it does get the job done. You can already start to see a couple of showers moving ashore now around the Manborough area or down towards Clifton. Uh, those showers likely to intensify throughout the course of today into later this morning and early afternoon. In terms of peak wind speeds from this cold front, it's not necessarily going to be the windiest cold front, but still winds could average 50 or 60 kilometers an hour and peak gusts are likely to be around 65 or 70 kilometers an hour, maybe even up to 80 kilometers an hour in the back end of this cold front as it makes its passage through the Perth metro area. So certainly some strong winds expected and coupled that with heavy rainfall, it will be quite a nasty weather system. The south coast as well, expecting some significant impacts in terms of rainfall and winds, but not as significant as the weather system coming through Saturday evening and into Saturday night. We're expecting two parts to this system. A heavy rainfall band around Geraldton and Calvary dropping um, huge amounts of rainfall for this time of the year up there. We're expecting up to 100 millimetres around Northampton and Calvary of, ra of rainfall that they really do need. And then the initial main cold front coming through Saturday night into early Sunday morning around 2 or 3 a.m. by the looks of things in the Perth metro area. This cold front probably won't be as strong as the system coming in tonight for Perth and the south coast. It will get quite strong as you get down towards Pemberton and Wool 
pole, but for the Perth metro area, it's likely not going to be that significant in terms of impact, just some gusty winds and a brief period of very heavy showers moving through early Sunday morning. Also the chance of storms too, but it's on the back end of this front that really has me worried. We've got these very strong winds whipping around the back end of this system, and they do really pick up early Sunday afternoon into late uh, Sunday evening when these winds really are at their worst. And we're expecting heavy showers, thunderstorms, small hailstones as well in the back end of this weather system. Very strong wind gusts too, probably up towards 100 kilometers an hour with the passage of this weather system. And also some very big waves for coastal areas. They're expecting some wave heights up towards six or seven meters for some locations. And another little cold front sweeping up from the south Monday afternoon for the south coastal regions around Pemberton and Walpole. That one will be very violent for the south coast, at least initially with some damaging winds and some very heavy rainfall and showers, but then clearing off of the Perth metro area by late Sunday night into early uh, Tuesday morning. And then it looks like next week, relatively calm in terms of wind speeds, just a couple of showers here and there as a low pressure system develops just offshore. That will become a pretty major cold front. And then next weekend, looks like we have another big cold front coming in, Friday the 14th and Saturday the 15th. Just the heads up, I'm going hiking in the Stirling Ranges around that time, leaving on the 14th, coming back on the 17th. So there will be no videos at the time but you can bet a hiking vlog is coming and I'm very excited to try out a couple new filming techniques and show you guys the Stirling Ranges in all of their glory because they are an amazing uh, mountain range and I'm just hoping for a little bit of snow maybe Sunday morning I'll be just lucky enough to receive a little bit of snow on the top of Bluff Knoll which I will be able to capture on camera very excited for that but yeah this Sunday front here that we that is the main focus this time because it is the strongest cold front in terms of wind speeds looking at wind speeds between 60 and 70 kilometers an hour gusting to around 80 80 or 90 kilometers now for the Perth metro area. They will be at their worst around 2 p.m. on Sunday and then easing off after then. But if the severe weather warning is issued, it will be applicable from around lunchtime Saturday right through to maybe lunchtime Monday, including all of Sunday where heavy showers, damaging winds, small hailstones, and large seas are expected throughout the day. And just while we're on the topic of large seas, I mean, take a look at these waves here offshore Sunday night. We're talking about wave heights of around seven meters extending from uh, Cape Naturalist right up towards the Abrolla side and St. Geraldton where they uh, start to decrease off up there but still very significant wave heights are expected and then rainfall for these weather systems we're expecting up to 100 millimeters for the Darling Ranges and the Perth coastal plain. Perth itself expecting 60 which I do believe is a bit of low balling at this time the GFS might be a little bit higher but not really but yeah I do think 60 millimeters for tonight's front and this weekend is a little bit on the low balling side if I was the one writing the forecast I'd be going at around 80 millimeters at this time or between 80 and 100 if you live closer to the hills and then down on the south coast as well, up to 120 millimetres is possible. Inland communities in the wheat belt, we're looking at between 30 and 50 millimetres of rainfall, and it will penetrate very far inland. Even the goldfields expecting up to 40 or 50 millimetres in one or two locations. But just to know that it will get a little bit patchy, the rainfall at least will get patchy as you get further out into the goldfields and into the interior parts of Western Australia. And then in the north as well, around Kalbarri, a very healthy 200 millimetres is expected. Uh, around Kalbarri and Geraldton itself, about 100 or between 80 and 100 millimetres is expected this time. They're going to receive some very heavy rainfall on that or up there. There'll be more details in tomorrow's forecast update once we get the front that's coming through tonight out of the way, but still some very heavy rainfall basically are given at this time from these weather systems, so make sure you are staying safe. Um, but yeah, in terms of other weather for Western Australia, it doesn't look too interesting at all, especially up in the north. It's just dry and warm as well, warm nights, uh, warm days, cool nights, but in the south part of Western Australia, it is quite nasty indeed. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. I'll be more than happy to answer them as well. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated lately. We're getting close to 16,000 subscribers as well. So if you haven't already, then please do join the team. We're nearly 16,000 strong and I would love to have your support as well. But yeah, that is all from me. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I couldn't run this show without them. That's all from me today and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.